Hi, my name is Dave Weber and thanks for tuning into our YouTube channel. In this particular video, we're going to talk about record cleaning machines. In particular, the Laura Craft PRC3. It's not uncommon for me to get a lot of emails and questions from folks wondering about these devices. Do they really work? Is it a bunch of gimmick? If they do work, just how well do they work? How much will it improve my records playback? Well, hopefully this video will answer a lot of your questions. We're going to tear into the PRC3 record cleaning machine and take a good look at it inside and out to give you an idea of the construction of it, the concept, how it works, and just how well it works. So I'd sit back, watch the video, and let's go clean some records. Now there's two basic different types of vacuum extraction machines on the market today. The vacuum tube, which we'll get to in another video, and the vacuum wand. The Laura Craft models, all of them, are a vacuum wand machine. And the, what gives it the vacuum wand name is this device right here. The whole focal point of the machine is this tone arm looking device that actually removes the debris from the record. And we'll get to exactly how that happens in a live demonstration in just a few moments, but we'll walk you through the fundamentals right now. Alrighty, looking at the uh, vacuum extraction wand, you're going to notice a spool of thread that's perched on the back of it. Now what you do here is you take the thread from the spool and you insert it down this pipe. It runs through the pipe, all along the arm, and it makes its way out the front. And when the thread gets deposited out of the front, and I'll show you that right here, it loops back through and up the suction nozzle of the vacuum extraction wand. What it happens then is the water and the debris from the surface of the record, including the thread, makes its way up through this upper pipe, all along the arm once again, and comes out the very rear, which is attached to a, a flexible hose. The thread, the liquid, and all your debris from the record deposits into this jar. Now a lot of people think that this thread is uh, here for the purpose of being a floss to help clean the groove of the record, and that is not true. What it actually is, is it holds the arm up off the surface of the record just enough so the arm doesn't suck itself fast to the surface of the record. So it's not, it serves the purpose of a ski, if you will, and essentially just holds the arm up a little bit and slides along the surface of the record, as you can see here, and allows a little air to convect, convect its way up through that nozzle. The platter of the Laura Craft is made out of acrylic. It has a very nice neoprene rubber pad bonded to the surface of it, and removal of these three Allen screws gets you easy access to the drive belt. The drive belt's a nice heavy duty unit, you shouldn't have to service it often, and it should give you years of trouble free use. We were delighted also to see that the unit had a nice beefy flywheel mounted directly below the platter, which will help keep the unit rotating smoothly and evenly. And all this is driven by a nice heavy duty motor, so under extreme scrubbing conditions, you shouldn't have any problem bogging this device down. Let's take a little closer look at the inside. Removing the upper case of the Laura Craft device once again reveals the attention to detail that the manufacturer puts into their products. The entire interior casing of this unit is coated with some sort of protective paint to guard against moisture and mildew. If you look in the center of the box, you'll see the vacuum pump that we spoke of earlier. And one thing we want to direct your attention to is the little gear drive motor that operates the arm. What makes this kind of interesting isn't the fact that they chose to use an inexpensive gear drive motor, but what they did to protect the unit from damage is they put a little magnetic clutch on it. If you look at the front of the motor, the, or the shaft of the motor, you'll see a little flat piece of machine steel. And if you look at the bottom of the vacuum wand, there's a unit that looks just, or a piece that looks just like that, but it's magnetized. What this magnetic clutch accomplishes is when the motor's engaged, and as you can see, the arm would be pulling itself across the record that's being cleaned, it allows you to be able to grab the arm, stop it, back it up, move it forward, do whatever you want without damaging the gearbox motor. Those two magnetic mating surfaces hold enough tension where the motor can pull the arm at will across the record. However, it slips just enough where if you had to pull it or move it, you don't damage the mechanism. A very interesting way of solving a problem. So how does all this come together when it comes time to clean a record? Well, we're about to show you. We went to our local Salvation Army store and picked up a 99 cent special. What we were looking for was a piece of vinyl that was in physically good shape without scratches and gouges. However, we were looking for one that had fingerprints and dust and grime all over it. Now, since the record is black and it's gonna be hard for the camera to pick this up, what we did was we took the record and put it under a CCD microscope and magnified it immensely. 
And once again, because the record's black, the software of this microscope allows you to use colors to give you a, a depth perception. So what we did is we used white for the peaks and blues for the valley. And if you look in this picture right here, you're looking at the grooves magnified, and you could see the, uh, the record grooves, and also you could see a lot of the debris that's lying in there, those things that look like tumbleweeds and boulders and all that kind of stuff, is actually the dirt and grime that's residing in the record's grooves. So you can only imagine your stylus shooting down that groove and plowing through all that stuff while it's trying to do its job by picking up the, uh, the variations of the groove to deliver the sound. That's what you get your pops and clicks from. So getting back to this record, we'll show you how you get rid of all that. You start the motor spinning, and then you saturate the record with a cleaning solution. You take a brush and you basically smear the solution around until you're covering the whole record. Once you've got the solution spread evenly over the record, you want to pay a little attention to the grooves and just kind of loosen up that debris that you saw in those grooves and kind of get it to float. We pay a little extra attention to the outer rim of the record because that's where most people would grab onto it. So the finger oil and the embedded dirt around the outer perimeter is generally the worst. Once you got it all set, then what you do is you start the arm in place, start it in motion, and then you start the suction. And slowly but surely that wand will go across the record and it'll vacuum up all of our solution, the liquid, and any of the dirt and grime that's embedded in there. Next what we do is generally make a little effort to clean the record one more time. And not with any kind of solvent or soap, but just to kind of rinse it to make sure we have any kind of residue from our cleaning solution removed. And we do a bi-directional on that one, meaning that we start the arm from the outside of the record and let it work its way in toward the center. So just how did our record cleaning machine do? Let's take a look. We'll put this record back underneath the microscope and sure enough, take a peek. Absolutely microscopically perfectly clean. We were astonished. So is it a gimmick? Absolutely not. The Laura Craft PRC3 definitely does the job and does it well. Let's give it a listen. All right, what I'm going to do, upon playing this record, I'm going to land the stylus slightly before the track I want to play, just to give everybody an idea how quiet a perfectly clean piece of vinyl can function between the tracks. So here goes. That's just nuts. And that is the way it is. I mean, no matter where I land this stylus. That's pretty much what you're looking at, kids. It is just absolutely amazing. So there you have it. It actually works well. Pretty cool. So, does the Laura Craft PRC3 record cleaning machine do its job? Absolutely. You saw it with your own eyes on the microscope, and you also heard it with your own ears. However, if you're asking yourself if you went out and bought one of these, if it would mend your entire library of records, or if they're all going to sound that good, the answer is no. 80% of the quality of the playback of vinyl is the quality of the vinyl itself. If your records have scratches or surface imperfections, you're going to hear those pops and clicks that you're accustomed to listening to and they'll be in the same spot where they've always been. However, if the vinyl's in great shape and you clean it, this is the kind of result you'll get. 
We typically find that the records that really benefit from the record cleaning process are your older 78s that might have a lot of wear and tear and there's a lot of debris residing down in the bottom of the grooves. Those come back to life like I can't believe. Same with some of the older 45s as well. So 15 to 20 percent improvement is what to be expected out of a record cleaning machine and that's the bottom line. You got to keep in mind though that these machines cost about 2,500 bucks and that's a hefty investment for one. Granted, the lower craft, it's built well, and it's probably worth the money. But it depends on what you're going to do with it. If you're an archivist like me, or if you have a record store possibly, or if you're an audiophile and you have a great record collection and you've got the money for it, yes, you'll squeeze the most out of your vinyl. But that decision's kind of up to you as an individual. Anyways, we're running out of time, so thanks for watching, and thanks for tuning into the YouTube channel. And check out some of our other videos as well.